couple different brands. Mod Podge is, whoops, hold on. Let me, uh, let me acknowledge. May that. I interrupt for one quick second? I'm going to, I just remembered I'm supposed to be recording this. So just letting everyone know we're recording it. If you want to go back later on, it'll be on a YouTube channel, which I will send out the link after the program. Awesome. Thank you. So there's other brands of decoupage medium, but Mod Podge is kind of the one that everybody knows. Um, the other supplies you need are uh, for the collage. We're going to work with um, whatever you have on hand, magazines, catalogs. If you um, have other kinds of papers, whether it's book papers or scrapbook papers, those will work as well. You need to have some uh, cardstock. I'm probably going to work on white cardstock, but you could work on a colored cardstock if you wanted to. Um, I'm working on basically a half size sheet and um, because I'm going to use this as the cover of my bullet journal. Now I'll talk very briefly about a bullet journal. Ha has anybody ever made one or even heard of a bullet journal? No. So it's, if, I mean, you're familiar with other kinds of journals, right? There's ones that are more like a diary. There's ones that are for drawing and art journaling. A bullet journal is for, for list makers <laughs> and for people who, who like to kind of keep track of things and who, who really, I don't want to say we are fastidious or anal, but I will say that if you really dig a bullet journal, you're probably pretty organized and, and that's a good thing. And so you don't have to use this for a bullet journal. You can use this collage when we're finished for anything, but I just wanted to throw this out there. And uh, what a lot of people will do is they'll make their own. And the point of a bullet journal is to create a pages that work for you to create lists. If it's a to-do list, if it's a gratitude list, I'm sorry, this is backwards, huh? Is this, does this come across backwards for you guys? No. Okay. Right. Uh, for me, it looks backwards because it's mirror image for me. Um, it may be uh, motivational words. You know, th there's always these um, word of the year kind of challenges and I things that you might see on Instagram. Um, ideas, bucket list ideas for places you want to visit, things you want to do. It could be as simple as a grocery list, um, a to-do list. And so this PDF that was emailed to you, I just designed quickly on the computer and printed it out just so you had some a place to start. So you can print these out on two sides and um, and and then we're going to fold it in half and that's the half sheet is going to be the size of our bullet journal and I'll even show you a, a simple binding technique with a needle and thread. So but some people will um, will actually hand you know hand do your journals and so they will take uh, you know, time to make, you know, really nice little um, squares for checkoff boxes, or they might do some doodling, or they might do some lettering, practice some calligraphy, um, write, you know, not only just write diary entries about their day, but, but even write things that inspire them, things that they want to do, like I was saying. So a bullet journal, if, if you Google it, you'll see lots of examples of bullet journals, and many of them are hand-drawn. Um, but uh, you could just print out my sheets if you wanted to instead. So just a place to start. So I, what I did for the cover, you could, uh, you need a piece of cardstock. Um, you could work right on the, the front half of the cardstock that's going to make the cover. I'm actually going to work on a separate piece of paper. And I, and I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to go with a colored sheet or white. But I'll make that decision as we go. I actually trimmed this down. I trimmed a sheet of uh, eight and a half by 11 cardstock in half. And then I took another eighth of an inch off the short end and the long end so that it's just a tiny bit smaller. Um, you have, it ends up, you have like a 16th of an inch all the way around. And that way, when we, if you use that for a cover, we paste it down and it will fit without going over. So this was the inspiration image that I found for us to use tonight. Um, it, this is not my artwork. It was just a, a random print, I think, that was for sale online. I, unfortunately, I don't know who the artist is. It's not a signed print. But it was what was inspiring about it to me is I, I do like cactuses. They're kind of a trendy, um, a trendy object <laughs> uh, for art. But um, I also, what I liked about it from a collage point of view is the layers and the dimension that you could get with such a, a flat 
illustration. So you can see you've got darker cacti, medium shadowy cacti, and then really, really pale in the back. So it gets the feeling of stuff in the foreground, stuff in the background, and then stuff in between. And so it'll be interesting to play with colors and textures in collage to see if we can achieve that same sort of depth. And then of course the flowers, you know, are, um, you could choose to paint those in or cut them if, but if they're a little too difficult to cut, I, I kind of think painting them after might be more fun, but we'll, we'll just work on the uh, getting the layers down first. Any questions so far? So um, I kind of wanted to put this where you could see it. Uh, it's a little too big. Well, I'll, I'll flip up any time. If you ever need to look at it, I'll flip up. So here's, I like Land's End catalogs, not only because I order their clothes, but they're really colorful and you get a lot of um, solid areas of texture and color that's not too crazy, but it's still kind of fun. And depending on the season, like right now it's, it's winter clothes. So there's a lot of checks and plaids, but the other thing that they do besides having lots of, you know, big space for colorful um, things to cut out, um, you also, they also do this stacking thing with their sweaters and sweatshirts. And so you get this, um, these, this strip of, of uh, stripes kind of. And I, and I talked about this in, in my last collage class. And the other thing is like sweaters have such interesting texture. And um, so there's, there's lots of reasons. Look at that, that stack of pajamas is really, really fun. And you could cut a shape out of it and, and you wouldn't even know what you were looking at once it's cut and collaged into place. So any catalog will do, but clothing catalogs, especially ones that feature a lot of bright colors are really great. So when you're looking at cacti, there's a few basic shapes. And that's the other reason I liked this as a subject matter because we could really focus on color and texture and not worry too much about shape. So I kind of drew, uh, and, I, and I'll apologize right now, I don't like this shape. It's it looks like a cucumber or something else. And I would, I think I would prefer to stick with the long skinny baseball bat shaped cactus with the little elbows. I think those are really cute. I love the, the fan, the like upside down teardrop, like balloon cactus. So these are the shapes that, that we're looking for to cut out of our magazine. And so, uh, and we're going to just, you can see it's very, it's varied, right? There's small, skinny, fat, large, you know, and so we're just going to not worry too much about composition right now. We're just going to we're just going to think about these shapes. And you might take a moment on a piece of scratch paper to draw these shapes and you could even cut them out to use as a template if you'd like. I think they're easy enough to draw freehand. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, so what we're going to do is first we're going to look through our catalog and um, and find tear out pages that have colors that we like. And we're focusing on the sh different shades of green, but you can see that there's actually, there's some yellow green, there's some blue and purpley kind of shades in here as well as sort of regular green. And then there's real pale yellow in the back. So, and there's also texture, you know, there's these kind of, there's lines going this way. Um, there's a little bit of shadowing. You can kind of get a sense that, you know, that there's light and dark areas, but um, so I'm gonna, I really encourage you to, to be loose and fun and whimsical with the texture. So you can focus on your greens um, or you can also build in, you know, some, some, like I really like this shade of green right here. So I might just cut a skinny cactus out of that, but I also like the, the pinks um, and even the purples for maybe the cactus flowers. I'm actually gonna wait on the cactus flowers. I'm really right now, we're just gonna focus on the cactus shapes. So you can see I, I cut out a few before we started. And what you wanna do right now is just start flipping through your magazine or your catalog and look for greens and tear, tear that out. So like this is a really cool uh, green and yellow, this coat was a great sort of dark green. This coat was a sort of light minty green. These pajamas were a really nice light minty green. And the one tip about flipping through your catalog, if you find something you like, don't forget to look on the other side first before you tear it out, just in case there's something better. So I encourage you to just rip out pages 
And um, like, here's, here's a nice plaid. So I'm going to rip that out and just, um, just, just rip out some greens. This is a good, this coat. And it has this texture of these stripes on it, which are very kind of, um, I, I don't say they're cactusy, but I like the texture. So we're just going to rip, rip, rip. And just keep looking for greens. And like I said, mix it up a little bit. And if you help, if, if cactuses aren't your thing, think about um, tulips and daisies, right? Simple shapes that can be sort of tall and squat. That's what really kind of makes this interesting to me is it's sort of a mixture of tall, skinny and squat round shapes, which I think is interesting. Any questions so far? Oh, look at that yellow. I'm gonna use that yellow somewhere, I think. So lots of ripping, ripping, ripping. Just get yourself a little pile of colors that you like. Oh, that's a great, nice, that's a good green jacket right there. And you're not even really worried about like, what part are you gonna cut out? You just wanna get a little pile of color. This one I think I've exhausted. Oh, here's a Target cat catalog. I don't see the problem with some catalogs is that there's way too much text and not enough solid color, which is why a Target catalog doesn't work. I think I'm pretty pretty stuck on Lands End. Oh yeah, there's some good good colors in here. That's a nice green. Ooh, that's a pretty green right there. Minty. Did anybody ever use Clinique cosmetics? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember back in the 80s, I was completely in love with all things Clinique and my entire bathroom was that mint green color just to match all the products on the counter. <laughs> all right, so um, I'll give, just take your, take your time and you can work at your own pace. But I, um, you've got some piles, some colors. What am I trying to say? Some pages. Now, for tracing the shapes to cut out, this is the way I'm doing it. And you can choose to do it the same way. Um, I'm using a Sharpie. Um, and I'm actually uh, keeping, I'm cutting around the outside of the Sharpie line. Um, you can see that was one of those green coats. Um, you can see that little waffle texture. I'm, I'm keeping the line for now because I think I might like how it looks. I think it'll give it a real kind of cartoon graphic, you know, look. And then if I, if I end up hating it, then I'll, then I'll cut it off when I'm auditioning these pieces before I glue everything down. I, I actually like how the pink turned out against the green, but you could use black. You could just use a pencil and not, um, or you could use, just use a black thin marker. You want it to be dark enough to be able to see it uh, so that you can easily cut it out. So I'm cutting, I'm looking for texture. So the stripes, I'm cutting like tall baseball shapes, medium baseball shapes, smaller baseball shapes. I'm also thinking about dark, medium, and light as far as my colors because of, of how I'm going to of how I'm going to organize the layering. So be thinking about that. Um, then, then same with the, uh, with the um, I'm going to call this a balloon shape. Um, you've got small, small ones and, and medium ones. They stack on top of each other, right? For that cactus. And again, I'm, I, this coat had like a yellow, she was wearing something yellow underneath. And I love that picking up that little yellow stripe. I thought that was really fun. Um, and then you've got your elbows is what I'm calling them. And you want to make some, some tall, skinny elbows, some sh short squat elbows, and, um, again, mix it up between light and dark. So just start cutting, start tracing and cutting using these basic shapes of, uh, small, of me uh, medium and large teardrops and then the baseball bat and the elbows in either left and right. And then just kind of make your little pile as you're, as you're going along. 
and just kind of avoid the text if you can, but don't worry about avoiding seams and pockets and shadows from the clothing because that ends up that ends up looking um, kind of cool once it's cut out. So see how I'm just I'm just kind of randomly making my shapes. And now I'm going to cut those out. Um, you may want to use large scissors or small scissors, to, you know, depending on what you're comfortable with. But I will recommend cutting away the excess first before you start fussy cutting, because um, you don't that have not having that paper flopping around is way easier. So I usually really trim it down to just the area that I've traced before I start cutting. And this may seem like a no brainer, but when you're cutting, move the paper, not the scissors. So your scissors are gonna just be staying right in the same position. The only thing that's moving is, you know, as you close them and open, close them and open. But a lot of people move the scissors and you get a choppy line that way. But if you keep the scissors in position and move the paper, uh, so that you're cutting along that line, you can get a much smoother line. So seems like a seems like a super elementary tip, but it, it's surprisingly um, handy. <laughs> Cut away your excess, and then there's something also very um, one thing I like about collage whether you're using torn paper or cut shapes like this. Um, it's, it's easy art, it's meditative art. It's like, it can be very calm, especially when someone like me isn't yakking in your ear the whole time. <laughs> Who wants to shout out what city they're in? How far apart are we? I'm conquered. Are you guys all San Mateo? I'm San Mateo. Yeah. Now this one, I already have, I'm looking for some lighter ones. So I'm gonna, here we go. I'm gonna do some baseball bat shapes, tall and skinny. Does anybody have any questions about any sort of like unrelated art supplies or craft supplies or any burning questions about uh, brands or uh, any recommendations you need, just holler them out. A quiet group tonight. We do have someone else from Pacifica who's joined us. So Sally, welcome Sally. If you've just joined, we're just cutting cactus shapes out of magazine pages in shades of green, medium, dark and light. And if you missed it, here's the basic shapes. Here's the inspiration photo again. And we're going to start layering after we get a nice big pile of shapes cut out. Let's see, I feel like I need some tiny ones. Kind of keep as you're going, kind of like alternate big baseball bat, small baseball bat, big balloons, small balloons then you'll be sure to have enough of what you need when we start auditioning our composition. So this one, I'm just doing a whole bunch of the, the fan shapes uh, in that pale green for the background, back area.
Does anybody have other creative pursuits that you enjoy? Does anybody like to paint or, or make cards or anything like that? Everybody's shy. Is everybody Carol, left? Car no, they're still here. <laughs> um, Carol was asking, how do you preserve your artwork? Well, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on the medium you're working in. In this case, we're working with Mod Podge. So that pretty much, that seals it. I mean, we're gonna use this underneath as glue and on top as a sealant. So when you're working with just simple paper and collage and you're using a, some sort of a decoupage medium, that's all you gotta do as far as preserving it. Other mediums, it just depends on whether it's a wet medium, a dry medium, most dry mediums like colored pencil or pastels, um, you you do, you might you might spray a, a quick uh, um, uh, what's the name of the spray? You'll have to forgive me. I still um, have we. I had COVID a month ago, and I still have a little bit of fog. Like I don't know if it's because I'm pushing 60 or if it's because I had COVID, but sometimes I can't remember the word I want. Um, anyway, there is a spray uh, that you can put on dry media that protects it, but mostly um, it's protected by virtue of being framed underneath plexi or glass. For wet media like acrylic or oil, you don't usually, there's, there's glazing mediums um, and uh, kind of clear, uh, clear mediums in either a gloss or a matte finish that will, um, protect the paint and um, help with UV protection for light uh, as well. But long story short, I am not the kind of artist that is creating masterworks intended to last for generations. I'm making stuff that will probably be found at the thrift store after I'm dead. <laughs> And that's okay. I hope that it makes it to a thrift store and not to the trash bin. But it's stuff that um, I'm enjoying and people who buy my art are enjoying right now. And that's what matters to me. I'm trying to stay focused on the present. But then I don't have kids, so I'm not as future minded as, as most parents are. Okay, so um how are we doing on time are we going an hour or an hour and a half hour and a half okay so we're just a half hour in so we have plenty of time you feel like you need more time to to find greens and cut them out or or can i move on and you'll catch up anybody have any opinions one way or the other okay i'm gonna um just realized i want one more all skinny one. While you're yeah. cutting that out, you had asked if the, them if they were doing any other kind of artwork. And Sally took some book binding classes through the library. Oh, and fun! She's, and she's been making books. That's really fun. There's so many uh, great ways to um, to assemble books. I mean, book binding is uh, I, I love it. I think it's really interesting. Okay, so what I wanna do first of all is kind of look, spread out, I'm spreading out my pile of shapes. I'm gonna kind of group them a little bit. Um, and I already know I've, I didn't cut out very many elbows, so I know I'm gonna need some elbows, but I'll grab those as I go, I'll cut those out as I go. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need some more elbows. So I've got my shapes kind of laid out here and um, I have to decide based on my colors. First of all, do I like the pink outline? And I think I do. And do I like, you can see there's a little bit of show through this. The, the cactus doesn't completely cover. There's little bits of, of white peeking through. Um, so it feels like there's uh, air in the background. So, but I'm not sure if I want to work on a color or not, I, I pulled out like a green, a, a, a tan, a gold, and a black. And as I look at the greens against these, 
I think I'm sticking with white, especially because I, I, I really kind of want this pink outline to work. And so that's going to be my choice, but you guys do make your choices. As far as composing, I'm going to start, I'm going to start top to bottom. And because this particular composition top is the back layer, the, the, the cactuses that are the lightest and the furthest away, whereas the middle is sort of the middle layer and the cactuses are a little bit darker and a little bit closer. And then the bottom is the darkest or the brightest um, and they are in front. That's sort of how it how it's set up. So I'm gonna work in that same order. And um, that way I can layer things on top of each other. So I'm gonna start with my little piece of paper and let me, uh, let me clean up my space a little bit. Okay, put these away. So I'm gonna start with my, I'm gonna go for white and I'm gonna start at the top with my lightest pieces. And I'm just gonna see how these look. And you know, I think the outline might, I might not want to keep the outline because I can already tell that it's very dominating um, as I start, you know, really, and it's really, you can really see it, see it brightly against the white. I'm not sure, but I'm going to, I'm going to roll with it for a little while because I don't really feel like I, I really thought I had it. That's the thing about any kind of artwork is that some people have a really strong third eye where you can really visualize things before you actually physically see them. And not everybody does. Some people's brains are just wired a little differently and they, their third eye might not be as um, active and that's all fine. But um, I'm feeling, well, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. So, so I'm, you can go symmetrical or asymmetrical. I think I'm gonna go a little bit more asymmetrical and definitely, I think what I'm going to do is, is kind of, because I want things to squish, I think I'll work kind of on one side in, until I have time to cut more pieces. So I'm just going to audition these pieces um, and kind of see how I like it. And some cactuses, especially this variety that's got the round, they, they're... Um, kind of crooked, right? They're kind of, you can kind of angle the, the balloons a little bit, or you can keep them straight. You can put the, I like layering the, the top one behind the bottom one. I think that looks more natural. Not that any of this looks particularly natural. <laughs> um, but, and then I have my baseball bat style, which needs some elbows. So I know I'm gonna to have to cut some elbows for those to fill in a few of those spaces. So I think what I might do is pause my composition right there and, and grab some more of that light green and hit those elbows. Or actually, I think I might use some of this yellow. This, do we think the elbow needs to be the same color as the baseball bat? I don't think so. I think I'm okay with it being uh, slightly different. Um, Oh, there's, I kind of, well, I can't really do it, but hold on, let's see. Oh, here's a nice pale green. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw some elbows here on this jacket. Mostly because she has her own elbows and I can just follow the crook of her elbow on both sides. To draw the elbow, it's kind of like you start with a little baseball bat and then you curve it in a little skinnier at the bottom. Um, and they can be tall and skinny or, or short and squat. You can see the difference between a tall and skinny one or a short and squat one. And of course you wanna make them both directions, left and right, so that they can fill the space however you need them to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut those out. I have, um, I highly recommend when you're cruising the internet, I have a friend named Anna Malena 
and her website is Ayala Art. It's her last name, A Y A L A Art. I believe that's her website, Ana Milena Ayala. She does amazing collage just using magazines. Um, and it's highly detailed and, and highly um, layered. And it's, it's just gorgeous. And now, in addition to large, like 24 by 36 uh, compositions, uh, which I bought one of her pieces and it's hanging in my living room. And I just, I, every time I look at it, I see something different because you don't even recognize, you don't even recognize the magazine content. You just see, you actually see what she's intending it to represent. Um, and it's just fascinating, but it, and it's so detailed. And, um, but now she's doing it on glass dishes. Like she'll go to the thrift store um, and get like a glass candy dish or a, a large glass, um, clear glass salad bowl or a serving dish. And she'll collage um, on both sides um, so that it's not, it's not a food safe dish anymore. It becomes just art on the table or you can use it for, I guess, wrapped candies or something. But um, she is doing beautiful collage on glass and she's just using magazines and catalogs and it's stunning. I highly recommend you check out her site if you get a chance. She's, she's here in Concord as well. And then my, my roommate here in the studio, I'm gonna pull the camera up. Um, I don't know if you can see above my head here, there's a bear and over there is a, an elephant and these are faces and she does, that's her side of the studio. This is my side. She does collage using hand painted papers that she paints using a gel plate, a gel press. And then she cuts the papers up into shapes to create these intricate collages you I mean when you look up close at that elephant or the bear and you see all the different um, snips and cuts of papers they're all hand painted papers gorgeous so you can really take collage into a lot of different directions is the point of that story and her name is Pat Vieira um, Vieira Art on Facebook V is in Victor I-E-R-A um, you can see her stuff on Instagram or her Facebook page Okay, so I've made some elbows. So I'm gonna see where they fit nicely in behind. And I think I might change places. So start kind of, you know, going back to your composition and filling in the space and, and overlapping however you wanna overlap and leaving white space wherever you want to leave white space. And so now I've kind of got the lighter stuff in the back and I'm going to kind of move forward uh, and kind of cover. And again, I'm not gluing anything down yet. I'm just auditioning, which can be a little frustrating because things slide around a little bit, but okay. And I'm allowing, allowing things to lay on top of each other and so I've got kind of that bigger one there, and then I've got some other lighter pieces here that I think might lay on top of that. And try to try to look for a little bit of contrast if you're layering on top of uh, pieces, and look for um, look for contrast, but also look for opportunities for like a little bit of white to peek through, so it kind of looks like. It gives it a little bit more dimension. And I'm gonna keep working my way down and getting it just a little darker as I go. And maybe pushing, pushing things up a little bit so that I, if I need more room. And I'm liking that. And moving the shapes around a little bit. And this one has an elbow here. The elbows work nicely for kind of, you know, covering the bottoms of the pieces behind it so that you don't feel like you've lost your, your base, your baseline.
And that's pretty good. So I'm kind of putting my elbows like right where, <laughs> right where the bottom of the cactus and behind it goes. And this one I like right here. That elbow's too big. I'm gonna cut that down. This is where smaller scissors come in handy for little corrections and adjustments. Okay, so that'll work right there. Yeah, I am liking my pink outlines for some reason. I think it's kind of cool. This big one feels like it needs to go in the back somewhere. I might break my own rule and put something light on top of something dark instead of, no, I think maybe I'll make this my, my focal, like put that right in front. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Move this guy up. And if you're feeling confident to start um, tacking things down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, Give you just another a quick tip about about your decoupage medium. But I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let me see. Yeah, and then I kind of like not busying it up too much. I'm actually enjoying the white space in between. Okay, so I'm feeling. I'm feeling okay uh, about this. So I'm going to set this aside. And the thing about Mod Podge is that it has a pretty long shelf life. If you're, if you're cracking it open brand new, it's probably a little more fluid and, and more um, uh, thin than if you're if it's been on the shelf for a little while. But the beauty of it is that it's water-based and you can um, very easily um, thin it out. And for this, when you're working with really thin paper like magazines, thinning it out is helpful. So if, it, if it's pouring, um, pour just a, a little glop into your, um, into like a little container Oops. And if you see it stringy like that, that's, that's old. <laughs> and that can sometimes get in the way that, that, you, you, that my Mod Podge is a little bit on the old side. So kind of, you know, if you have any real heavy solids, you might, you might want to pull those aside and get rid of them, but you should have kind of a smooth little puddle and then just put a little bit of water. I use a spritzer, but you could just use a, a few splashes or just a little bit of water and stir that in and, and just thin it, thin it down just a little bit. Now, I've also done collage with glue stick and um, sealed it later. Uh, so you can work, you know, if this, is, if this is too messy for your comfort level, you can totally work with glue stick to, to as the ad adhesive to adhere all of your pieces and then use, um, use the decoupage medium later on the top. That's totally fine. And, the, and you can use a, a better quality medium. You can just use, um, if, you are, if you are familiar with fine art products, you can use um, a gel medium or a glazing medium that like uh, is made by like Liquitex or, or Golden. These are manufacturers of really nice quality acrylic paints. And that those are beautiful for um, collage as well. They're just, they're more expensive. They also don't stink. <laughs> Mod Podge is kind of smelly. I'm just gonna get rid of this little string of, of solid. But what I've done is I've, I've kind of made it just a little soupier, not too, too wet. Not quite as, as thin as milk, but definitely thinner. And I've stirred it up really nice. So, and I'm not putting too much because you don't want it to dry out before you start, before you use it. For a brush, I recommend a, uh, flat brushes. Um, you can see 
a flat brush has an edge as opposed to as opposed to a, a round brush like this or a round brush like this a flat brush is better um, you can just get into all the nooks and crannies and and um, and make a thinner coat so i've got two i've got a big one and a small one and i'll probably use the small one for um, gluing down so I'm going to start gluing kind of in the same order as I was composing. Let me come down a little bit and from the top down and I'm going to try to keep things. I'm, I'm one thing you can do is you can actually take your phone. If you've got a composition laid out that you like, take your phone and snap a picture of it and then set your phone where you can see it because um, if as these things start flying around before you glue them down, you might kind of forget uh, where you put things. So I, I recommend that. I'm going to move my glue over here. Okay. So just don't, you know, don't completely soak your brush. Uh, less is more, but I'm just going to put a little on the page and set it down and just make sure that it's really um, hitting all the edges and a little on the page in roughly the shape of your piece and set it down and you have some time to move it around before it it settles and don't worry too much about stuff seeping out from the edges because you're gonna you're gonna cover the whole thing anyway and this stuff dries clear you can also paint the back of your magazine pieces but because magazine paper is so thin i actually prefer um, doing it this way and kind of moving it around and it kind of it kind of squishes all into place so just tap into your glue. And don't worry if you get some on top of a piece because it's all going to get covered up anyway. And lay that down, make sure. And what the thing that's important is you want to make sure that you've got a full, you know, you've got plenty of medium underneath, but not too thick so that it doesn't wrinkle and but not not too little so it doesn't bubble. And and just be careful not to get your glue where it doesn't belong. And I don't know if I told you this um, tan thing on my desk, this is a kind of a nonstick Teflon sheet that you can buy for crafting on. It's nonstick, it's really great for gluing and, um, because, and it cleans up really easily and you, it, you can scrape uh, most paints right off of it. So it's a great protective service, uh, service surface and you can get it in, in different sizes on a roll. Um, it's called a nonstick craft sheet. If so you, you throw it out? No, if you use it over and over and over again and, until, it, until it gets so beat up, you know, you wanna throw it away. But no, I just keep scraping. You just, you just it just cleans right up. You, okay. you can take a credit card and scrape anything off that has dried. It's great, yeah. Um, it's not, terribly cheap. So you definitely want to get as much life out of it as possible. It's not like buying, you know, like baking parchment or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And this guy came over here somewhere. So now we're just kind of gluing down our composition. And the nice thing about collage is that if it's glued down, and you can't move it and you end up hating it, you can just glue right on top of it. <laughs> and every mistake is a design opportunity is is the mantra of the day so again i'm just very thin coats and just making sure that it's all flat and um having some having a little baby wipe or a damp um a damp I, I get like any, an old washcloth uh, or an old um, dish towel is also great to have like just as a blotter to kind of keep the glue off your fingers as you're going so that you, and so having that handy is really good. And uh, so I'm just gonna keep, and definitely less is more because then you won't get warping. And you can see that my paper, you know, I'm starting to cover it with glue, but it's not curling up too badly. So that's a good thing. Now, when I get to the point 
or I start overlapping, then I have to be a little bit more careful of where I place things and I may decide to um, paint underneath on the bottom of the magazine instead in that case, um, just depends. Uh, another tip, speaking of baking parchment, um, kitchen baking parchment on the roll is also nonstick um, and it's great for using to kind of um, rub things down without wrecking what's underneath. You don't, you, you wanna do it quick, but like if you have um, a little wrinkle that you kind of want to smooth out, but you don't want to use your finger because you might tear the paper because it's got a little glue on it. This is a great, this is a great tool to kind of tap. It's almost like using a pressing sheet on the ironing board. It protects what's underneath it and also keeps the glue from your hands from transferring. So I'm just going to keep gluing and then um, I'm going to we can, we may or, you know, you may or may not finish your, your cover tonight and that's fine because I think you all have the gist, but I will in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to switch gears to um, the, uh, putting the book together once you've, once you've uh, collaged your cover. Lisa, is the Mod Podge better to use so the papers don't crinkle than like a glue stick? Um, uh, not necessarily. Um, it's, it, it's all about in the application. You can, you can, the wet, uh, is nice for, um, just being able to seal the whole thing at the same time. Uh, I, I'm, I hesitate to use glue stick if I'm, if I also want to seal it. I mentioned that earlier, but sometimes I hesitate because sometimes it's harder to get the glue stick completely saturated and you know all in there. And so then when you seal it, that's when you you'll notice bubbles and wrinkles. So a glue stick is great if I'm not going if it's not if it doesn't need to be sealed with a coat of Mod Podge on top or a coat of whatever medium. Um, and it's also great for kids. It's less messy. A glue stick is way less messy but uh, some sort of a sealer, a gloss medium like this is, is generally better. Um, yeah. Now this one's kind of big, but again, I'm just gonna really keep my, my coats thin and that really helps reduce the bubbling and the wrinkling. And that's why a flat brush is so helpful. And if you have extra, you just kind of, you know, just rub it along. If there's anything that it feels like it's not glued down, you just tuck your brush right underneath it. The other nice thing about this nonstick surface is that I can, I can paint the backs of my pieces right on the mat and then pick it right up again. And now I'm going down to this guy. This guy goes over here. And little elbow. Now I, I keep forgetting to do my, you gotta do your elbows quick because if you, if the body, I like putting the elbow behind the main cactus and instead of in front of it. So you gotta, you gotta slip it under there before it completely dries. <laughs> You only have a few seconds of open time before everything is pretty permanent.
The other nice thing about using magazines is that um, none of the ink reactivates when you get it wet with the medium. So that's a good thing. Sometimes if you're working with book papers or you know inkjet prints from your computer, um, I got a little wrinkle right there. Uh, you can actually reactivate the, the ink and you don't want to do that. And just kind of keep track of where you painted glue so that you don't put something down that you didn't don't mean to put down there. And so here's my progress so far. So your arms don't have to match the body. Not necessarily. I'm going whimsical, full on whimsy. Okay. Uh, it's completely up to you. The, the, the inspiration photo is pretty matchy matchy arms to bodies, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm going another direction and that's okay. You can do, can do it either way. Um, really the, the, the exercise part of this, besides just basic techniques of, of gluing down papers is, um, is creating dimension based on the colors and the, and the, and the order in which you lay them down. When you're working with something that is barely representational, I mean, you know, this is not like a cactus illustration where, you know, it's, it looks like cactus. The, this is something that these are pajamas <laughs> and overcoats that don't look like cactus, but when you get it all put down, it kind of does. And so, you know, as, as you're going, you know, I could make a decision. It's like, oh, I need, I want an arm right here to kind of break up this white space. So I might, I might cut an arm and it'll be on the outside, but that's okay. Cause I can't tuck it under right now but I might put an arm right there just to, just to bust up the shapes. That's the other thing I like about the cactus is that you've got these, you know, these different shapes. It's the contrast between, you know, long and, and long lines and round lines is, is nice. And it's, it's pleasant for the eye and you can, a cluster uh, it ends up looking, you know, really interesting to me anyway. So I'm just gonna get this last one down. And then I'm going to move on. And the other thing I like about an arm of the different color is that it, it can bust up these two baseball bats even more so than the, than the marker outline does. Whoops. There we go. So that... Right down like that. And this arm, yeah. So, so far, with the exception, of, I have a couple of wrinkles because I was working quickly, but so far, I'm kind of happy with that overall composition. I kind of get the feeling of that these light ones are in the back and this dark one is in front, and I kind of get that feeling. Got this one completely different, like that arm probably, <laughs> probably should have been paler. But here's the other thing, you can either glue on top of it or you can even, when it's all dry, before you add, before you add um, an all over layer of, of medium as a sealer, you know, you can go in there with, um, with like some different, a pigment, you could go over there with um, like a, a pastel, a chalk pastel pigment or a crayon pigment. Um, and, and, you know, add a little color, add a little, you know, something I could completely, I could, I could take some white colored pencil and, and, and dim that back a little bit. So, you know, that's the beauty of mixed media is a, there's no rules and B, as long as media, different mediums um, don't cancel each other out, you know, there are certain mediums that you want to always be on top of other mediums because of, of, of how they might resist each other. But for the most part, you can mix things up pretty nicely. Um, and I love, I love painting and drawing on top of paper collage. That gives you lots of options. But I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call my, that one, oh, I know, I know. I might, I'm, what I might do is I might, 
I think I was saying I might put an arm over here, but I have to cut one out to kind of bust up that. I've got, but I kind of like this sort of chain. This kind of, kind of almost looks like one big long cactus. Um, so you can see there's, you know, I've got a tiny bit of wave in my paper because of the moisture, but not too bad because I stayed, I kept my coats really thin and I only have one, I only have a couple of spots where I, I've got some wrinkles, but you know what? I, the wrinkles, I think once they're dry and I kind of flatten them out, the wrinkles are gonna add linear texture that I really like. <laughs> so I'm not afraid of the wrinkles in this case. So this has to dry um, at least a couple hours before you seal it. And sealing it, you're basically gonna take the exact same, and you might even make it a little thinner. You might even add a little bit more water to this, um, a wider brush, and you're just gonna go in big strokes straight across. And I recommend going the short distance um, because you can get, you know, your brush strokes can deliver the, the medium a little more smoothly than trying to do the longer brush strokes. But it basically very lightly brush it across um, with a very, very thin watered back and super, super light. And don't worry about if you see some little lines or bubbles, they, they, they tend to, to settle down as it dries. And then um, you'll have a complete sealed piece. Um, and then we'll glue it to our cover. I do recommend oh, Lisa? that you, oh, yes. Lisa, Melina yes. wanted to know if we're gonna make those little flowers on the cacti. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. I had mentioned that earlier. Hold on, let me, um, brushes with medium to keep them from becoming completely worthless, dunk them in water until you have time to wash them in the sink with a little um, warm water. But just keeping them wet, will prevent the Mod Podge from uh, hardening and ruining your brush. So older brushes are great for collage, not your newer brushes, because they will sometimes get a little stiff if you forget to, to rinse them right away. The flowers, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. So I had said earlier that I didn't know if I wanted to fussy cut the flowers because they are gonna need to be pretty small, but those were the, the shapes that I was able to kind of ascertain from this inspiration picture. There's this sort of a starburst shape and then more of a kind of a sawtooth tulip and then just kind of a flame shape. And so I drew those uh, shapes. You can see that the flowers are, you have red, you have orange, you have yellow, and that's gonna really add some nice, um, uh, contrast to this by adding those touch of flowers. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to paint them or cut them, but I think I'm going to cut at least one um, just to see how it looks. So I've got this bright pink piece right here. And I want to, I'm not even going to outline it. I'm going to see if it looks better without the outline. So I'm just going to rough cut that sort of flame shape. And the easiest way to start out is with sort of an oval or a football shape in order to kind of cut it freehand and then come in and notch it, right? And notch it and make those and then cut that last piece and boom, you have the flame shape. So cutting a circle and notching it is easier than than trying to cut all the way around it. And so some of the blooms are tall and some are short, right? Some most for the most part, they're all sitting on top. But I but I know that blooms can stick out of the side of some cactus, I'm pretty sure. And I, you know, I'm taking poetic license here. So but absolutely, like I, I could put that one and I could put it at a little bit of an angle that and that's going to look really nice. Let me um, let me just plop that right down. So the re but the reason you want to wait until last because you want to use these to accent after you're pretty comfortable with your um, composition for the main part. So I'm happy with that. And I actually like that they don't have the outline. Um, I think that that contrasts nicely with the rest of the cactuses that do have the outline. And I was able to put it at an angle to kind of bust up three shapes. So that's another composition tip, um, especially with a cluster kind of composition is to use elements 
judiciously to break up something, an intersection that might look a little too um, dull, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And then maybe I'll do, I've got this little melon colored piece of sweater. And I have just a moment, I'll do one other flower that's the wider kind of sawtooth shape. So again, I'm gonna cut almost like a, a, a bowl first, a curved bottom line and kind of a flat top line. And then I'm gonna notch and create my little sawtooth shapes of the tips and kind of make it a little bit random. It's almost like carving a jack-o-lantern. But there I've got that flower shape that's similar. And that might be too big. Oh, you know what? That bloom is way too big for my thing. So I'm gonna cut it in half and use this one. And that's gonna look really cute right there. Again, busting up an intersection that may need a little interest. So I'm just going to dab a little glue there and put that little crown on his head. And I might, my fingers are a little sticky, so I think I'll kind of rub it down with that. And there, now I've got that little bloom right there on top of that baseball bat. So I'll continue to do a couple more. Uh, in fact, that actually might solve the problem I had here. Instead of an elbow, I think I could do some blooms right on here and, and kind of bust up some of that open space too. Cool. Thanks for keeping me on point. I almost forgot the blooms. So we have uh, about 20 minutes or so. So what I wanted to show you was the super simple uh, poor man's book binding. <laughs> um, so what I do, first of all, let me make, make sure my glue is cleaned off before I set this down. I don't wanna... See, it just, it just slides right off of this sheet. It's so nice. And then, boom, I'm all set. Although I think I will dry it with a another towel. There we go. So, and this Mod Podge will be worthless pretty soon. The open time isn't too long and it'll get stringy and you can just, if you don't wash it out now while it's still fluid, you can um, probably peel it out when it's dry. Uh, but I use a lot of these. I save a lot of my takeout containers. And like this was a frozen lasagna meal. And this little plastic container is great for, for, um, for this purpose. So I'm going to pretend this is, I'm going to pretend this is my finished cover. And I'm going to, this is, these are going to be my, my pay, my inside pages. Now, what I did was I just folded a bunch of pages, as many as I want, and, and tucked them all inside each other. Right. So they're all together and I've got, I think five sheets of paper here. And I'm starting with a kind of a thin book for this particular binding technique. So you're gonna fold your pages in half. Ideally they've been printed with, if you wanted to use my little template um, or you're gonna leave them blank and draw on them, draw your little check boxes and lines later, get your ruler out, you know, do some doodling around the edges, you know, have fun with it, turn it into something really pretty just by itself and then you know, then go back and use it later if you want. But, um, and I also recommend when you're creating your, um, when you're create when you're deciding what kind of a, a, a bullet journal you want, uh, your pages can be different, but, you know, enjoy the, the art of penmanship when you're using it. So, you know, have some fun with your lettering, like when you're filling these out, and use it as sort of a meditative end of day um, part, you know, kind of, it's kind of like the gratitude thing. I think Oprah was the one that was like, at the end of every day, write down three things you're grateful for. And so really in, use a nice pen and, and play with your lettering a little bit, do some doodling and enjoy the meditative quality of that activity. Um, 
another another thing is uh, if you're a fan of Netflix and other streaming TV channels, you know, a bullet journal is a great place to list the, the movies and the shows that you want to see that, that you might forget about otherwise. If you wanted to do it in the morning instead of the end of day, um, using words, set, setting your intentions or setting some goals for the day, um, are, it's, a, this, it's helpful to use a bullet journal to just, you know, pick the words that mean something to you. So calm or um, maybe, maybe I've been really pissy lately. So bright is a word that I want to kind of set my intention for the day and behave with a little bit more brightness. So lots of different ways to use a bucket list, uh, excuse me, a bucket list, to use a, a bullet journal um, and, and kind of enjoy the process of making lists and checking things off and, and being sort of organized and slightly fastidious can be kind of uh, fun. <laughs> so I've got my cover and my internal pages, right? And this is the simple book binding. I've, I've, I've folded them in half and I've, they're all together and the fold is all together. And now I'm gonna take my, um, a piece of cork is handy or you can do it on a cutting board. And my little piece of cork just flew off of my workstation. So I'm gonna live without it. But a little piece of, of cork is helpful because you're gonna poke some holes. And you can, you can use a pen to draw them first, but I would just start at the top and dot, make a dot right in the crease and then start at the, go to the bottom and the same distance up from the bottom. So start with your top dot and your bottom dot and I'm going in oh, not, a little more than half an inch and then make a, make a dot kind of in the center and then split that in half again, another dot in the center, another dot in the center and that's probably enough. One, two, three, four, five holes that we're gonna string thread through. It's probably enough to hold this together. Um, if it was a little thicker or if you were wanting to have the binding be a, a little bit more um, of a decorative element, um, then you might, have, you might use more holes. But I'm just gonna go with five and I've placed them fairly equidistant on my center crease and I've got Depending on how many pages you have, you might need to do this. If you had, like I only have six sheets, including my cover, so that I can probably stick a push pin through that. Um, but if it's thicker and you've got more sheets, you might do them in batches. And so you would put this on top of your um, piece of cork. Forgive me a second, I'm looking for an alternative since my cork thing has fallen down. I just don't want to poke into my, here we go. I'm going to poke into a piece of cardboard on the back of this. All right, so they're all set together. And if you want to um, clip them so that they don't slip around so much, that's fine. And we're just going to use this push pin and poke the hole straight through into your cork. And you'll poke that hole straight through all the pieces of paper. And the cork is nice because you can really feel when you've gotten through the paper because the cork is kind of soft underneath. It's a little better than this cardboard I'm using. And you can make sure that you went all the way through by turning it over. And if it, if it looks like you need to kind of maybe that last sheet, then just do it, do the exact same thing from the back side. And, and just make sure you've gone all the way through all the sheets with your push pin. How are we doing on time? We got 15 minutes, okay. So now you're gonna take your choice of needle. I've got a really thick needle here, which I may, yeah. If you're using a, a thick needle, then you can um, make your holes just a little bigger by poking your needle through the pin holes and you'll widen that a little bit so that it'll be easier to thread it in a moment. So now I'm making my holes just a little bit bigger by pushing my heavy, it's almost like an upholstery needle. It's pretty thick, uh, but it has a big eye and you can use embroidery floss. Um, I'm using a metallic um, heavy, heavy duty thread. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm gonna leave it on the spool and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to keep my papers clipped. Um, 
so they don't shift since I worked so hard to make my holes even. I'm gonna clip it on two edges. That clip is kind of heavy, let me get a smaller one. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that my cover is on top and I'm gonna thread my needle. That in and of itself can take 10 minutes sometimes. <laughs> Another reason why using a large needle is helpful. And I give myself enough of a tail so it doesn't slip out. Now I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna, to... normally I might take, uh, imagine going up and down the, the, the length of this like four times or five times. So if you wanted to cut, cut your thread, that's about how much thread you would, you would pull off the spool about maybe about five times. Okay, so I will, I'll go ahead and cut that. So that's not banging around. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. One thing that I like to do because I like my threading to sort of end up being a dangle at the top and become kind of a, a, an interesting design element of my book is I, I like to um, stop and uh, start and stop at the top hole. Um, so this is my, this is, this is the, the front cover and this is my book, how it opens. And, and I want, I'm gonna leave the tail of my thread and I'm gonna go down and come back up again so that I end up with both tails up here coming out of the same hole and I can tie a knot. I can even add some beads to it and create a cute little dangle and I could tie a bow, but that's, that's how I like to finish it off. I think it's kind of bohemian and fun. And look what happened. I've already lost my thread. It came right out of that giant eye of the needle. Bear with me one second. So you can use colorful embroidery floss. You could use like two or three strands of multicolored embroidery floss. So I'm gonna start from the outside and go in towards the center and poke my needle through that top hole. And I'm gonna pull it all the way almost to the end, leaving a plenty long tail so I have options for a decorative dangle when I'm done. And if you like, you can, I, I just hold it with my thumb, but you could, um, you could uh, put a little piece of like washi tape or masking tape right there if you wanted to, but I just hold it with my thumb. So then I'm gonna come down to the next hole and just like sewing, just like hemming. Oh, this, <laughs> this thread is really slippery and it's a little too thin for my big fat needle. I'm sorry, it keeps coming out one second. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just do a quick little stitch and just come up and down and keep my thumb on there so that I don't lose my tail. There we go. And go down and make sure my holes are nice and even. So I'm, and do the same thing, come back up from the other side. Yeah, that was a funny noise somewhere on traffic outside, I guess, and down to the bottom hole. And then I'm going to go right back. And so you can see I've got spaces, right? So I'm gonna go right back and fill those in. And so come back up and down, fill in that space on that side fill in this space. So does that make sense to everybody? So basically you're gonna end up with, with stitching straight down the fold and go back down. So on both sides, you've got no, you've got a full line of thread between each hole, right? And um, now here's the part where I want, I want, I want my tail. I want two tails. I don't have to have two tails, but I kind of wanted two tails. And so basically what I'm going to do um, is <laughs> lose my thread again from the needle. 
Yeah, I've got way more than I need. I, what I would what I would recommend, depending on how many pages you have, is to do that two or three times, up and down, up and down, so that you get like you know three channels of thread, and that will really support your spine, and you won't uh, it won't tear uh, tear out with use. So basically, if I want to get back what I would do is um, just loop the thread around a few times, just a couple times, loop it around that, that last stitch, and then make a quick little knot, loop it through, and keep that knot really close, and then go, and then go back through. And that way you should prevent that stitch from coming back. Okay, so I that little tiny knot at the top and now I've got both tails coming out. Now I can actually get rid of that needle. And now I can do, I can tie a little bow. I can add a bead to that and make a little dangle and make it a cute little, and then you can even um, do it really long and then flip that dangle over and it becomes like a bookmark. So these are really cute gift ideas too. Really cute to make a handmade bullet journal for somebody. But now, now you're you now you can fold that. Um, let me tie my knot really quick. I'm gonna tie a little bow. No, no, I think I'll just tie a knot for right now. Um, and I'll reinforce that a second time. There. So now you've got a, you know, it's bound <laughs> and um, all your sheets are in there just like a regular book. Now keep in mind, if you have a lot of pages that are tucked inside each other, you'll end up with a, a, a graduated edge, right? You could take this and, and give it a slice if you don't want those feathered graduated pages because each page that's inside is pushed out a hair from the rest, right? So if you had more than mm -hmm. what I have, five sheets, you, your edge will have that little feathering and you may you may want to chop that off uh, with a paper cutter but if you're just making a thin book this makes a cute little handmade recipe book as a gift use pretty papers so and super fast easy way to bind it um, and then when i'm done with my collage i am going to very carefully um, i'll probably use a dry adhesive um, because I, I, I don't want to sop up the pages that I've got inside and I don't want to add too much more moisture to the book itself. So this panel that I just created, I'll put on the top and I'll probably use a dry adhesive like some glue stick for that um, after it's completely dry and sealed. And, uh, and now, I've, now I'm all set. I've got my, got my bullet journal ready to go. Or if you don't want to use a bullet journal, you can use it just as a plain diary, like I said, or a, a recipe book or an art journal. <laughs> any, any, uh, any questions on that fun little project? Thanks for your attention, everybody. I even finished up with five minutes to spare. Well, thank you. It's it's pretty cool. Just yeah, you no can, idea. <laughs> yeah, you can um you can go, you can really go crazy with the, with the paper. Like you could make a really beautiful blank book for somebody as a gift with watercolor paper or with um, heavier, heavier weight paper. And then what you would do in, instead of a push pin to get through heavier weight papers, um, you might, well, you could still do it with like, a, you could use a, a very lightweight hammer and tap. You could literally tap it, or you could use a really, really thin drill bit and drill your holes like that. There's also um, there's also something called a Japanese screw punch that has um, um, for a larger hole and the a Japanese screw punch is very cool. Let me show you really quick. If Google it, um, it's a it's a it punches and it allows you to make a really nice hole anywhere on the page because as you know. A lot of tiny hole punches are you're limited to the depth of the throat, right? Because it goes in like this. But with this guy, you just push it down and it makes a hole. I'm in a pretty, um, I think I need to clean it out, but see those little holes right there? So this little blade and then it, it unscrews and you can poke out the, the little holes, the little confettis. And this is a really thick piece of paper. So it didn't go all the way through because my 
thing is full, I think. But a Japanese screw punch is a great tool for book binding to make your holes a little bit bigger so you can put thicker yarns and floss in there for your spine instead of thread. Okay. So Christy says, so great. Thanks for the fun, patient, encouraging, mentoring, and ideas on this neat project. Yay. I agree. Yes. So find me on Facebook, Lisa. It's Facebook slash Lisa dot Fulmer. Facebook.com slash Lisa dot Fulmer, F U L M E R. And, um, you know, send me a friend request. Uh, show me what, how, what your finished product is. I will have mine completed and posted soon. And um, yeah, maybe what, someday if you're in Concord, come say hi. Well, thank you. That was amazing. A any last questions from anyone? Now's the time. <laughs> well, have um, a great rest of the week. If we have a follow-up question, can we email you? Me? me? Yeah. Or, yeah, absolutely. It's um, uh, Lisa Fulmer, my name. And then the third word is writes, W-R-I-T-E-S at gmail.com. Lisa Fulmer writes. I'm a writer. Lisa okay. Fulmer writes at gmail.com. And is Lisa Fulmer writes one word? Yeah. Just like in an email address, all, all Spanish okay. together. Yeah, I just yeah. put it in the chat too. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Happy to happy to chat. And on Instagram, I am Lisa Food Art Life. That's my handle on Instagram, Lisa Food Art Life, because that's all that matters. <laughs> Food and art. That's all I care about. <laughs> Very cool. So I will be, like I said, we recorded this. So um, I will send a follow-up email, probably not till next, the beginning of next week. And it'll have the link to the YouTube um, video of tonight, along with a very, very short survey about what you thought about the program. Well, give me an A plus everybody, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I can take it if you wanna give me a C minus. <laughs> Yes, Lisa was talking about maybe another program doing some watercoloring. So, yeah, I have a beginner's watercolor class where it's almost like a coloring book, but we, we draw a simple still life, flat, illustrative style, but we, we learn the basics of controlling watercolor and, and adding layers and transparency and adding little bits of shadowing and ways to create dimension. So it's very, very beginner. Um, and, uh, uh, if you can see more information about that, there's a class I'm teaching locally in person at artcottage.info. It's the local art gallery here, artcottage.info. And if you go to the class page, uh, you'll see a cute little um, GIF where it flashes the layers that it took to get to this point. Um, but I'm happy to teach that class online. It's up to the library. If we want to do it, I'm, I'm game. Okay. Love to have you come back. So... So thank you everyone, thank you for coming and I will be in touch when we have another Lisa program. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Okay, I'm ending the meeting. <laughs>